this part will be presentation of French mo Italian mobility programs and funding schemes by international mobility promoters. And we will also discuss um, about uh, discuss researchers' mobility during the pandemic. So I'm very pleased to welcome our speakers, Francois Pradal, uh, head of research de department from Campus France. Um, with him, we will have Eleonora Fossile, PhD candidate, laureate of, Mo of the MOCBA program. We'll introduce this program and her experience. We also have Serena Cheren uh, from Agency for the Promotion of European Research and Dr. Giovanna De Bernardi. Um, she's a judge at the court of Termini Imerese in Palermo. So um, I thank you for being with us today and for sharing precious information and insights and your experience with participants uh, who are here, who now I noted Italy, France, Belgium, Canada. So uh, thank you all participants for connecting. Uh, just to remind you, you will each have 10 minutes for your presentation and when you have two minutes left, I will give you this we sign uh, that there will be, um, there's just two minutes left and then I will take the same one or two questions. So participants, I, I invite you to ask your questions in the Q&R uh, session. So we will start with Francois, please, the, the floor is yours. Thanks, Christina. Uh, happy to see you back on, on Zoom. Happy to welcome all uh, Italian uh, students and researchers. And uh, I will introduce quickly uh, uh, Campus France tools. Um, if so. um, how to have a big screen? Just uh, we need to, to see my screen. Uh, yeah, that's it. So very shortly, we, we make this presentation with Marilyn who cannot assist the meeting today, uh, Marilyn Langlois, but I'm very happy to welcome uh, Helen, Eleonora, Elo, Eleonora Fossil, that is uh, an alumni from the MOBGA, Make Our Planet Great Again, uh, student who is uh, who is now a PhD student on the, I will uh, introduce you uh, Campus France tools and also uh, programs for better uh, mobility between France and Italy. Uh, mainly Campus France is a French agency uh, for higher education to welcome uh, foreign students, international students in France to make our uh, education and uh, to our universities and grandes écoles. Uh, this is the main uh, mission of Campus France, but we have also a mission about research, uh, and that's the point that we'll, uh, we will focus more today, uh, about the programs that we are making for PhD students and the researchers. Uh, for PhD students, we should know that uh, France has a very internationalized uh, uh, doctorat, PhD, with 41% of the students who are coming from abroad, and the second uh, most important students in France uh, are Italian students after Chinese. So this is a, a main point of focus and we are very pleased to welcome the, the strong and, uh, and fruitful cooperation between France and Italy to, for, for European research. Uh, on our website, I don't know if we, can, uh, if we can see it on the screens, if I share my screens, it's okay for you. We have, uh, we have Campus Bourse. Uh, you can choose the English language here with, a, with some type of grant. By instance, you, are, uh, you want to research in France. Your level is a PhD. Your subject area is arts, culture, design, and fashion. And you can go to choose your nationality here. Italy, see just your presentation. And to see yes, all the grants funded, by instance, uh, there is a high level scientific mobility grants, 
the Barand uh, Fellowship Program can be open for uh, Italian students. And you have many opportunities, Dr. Wade Sandwich Program with uh, CAPES for, to be teacher in France and other possibilities that, uh, that are shared by, uh, by our system, just to, to see all the possibility of grants for PhD students from Italy in different uh, system, because you can change, of course, the possibility of your subject. Um, the second tools we have is, uh, is a doctorate schools directory that, uh, that makes a mention of, uh, of different uh, subjects that are coming every day. So we want to centralize and we have a big uh, partnership with uh, l'Association Bernard Gregory on this, on this uh, program just to, to have all the publication of calls and projects of a PhD uh, to, be, to be in one, uh, in one system. By instance, you know, you have the most recent one. The last one is, uh, was published yesterday, but uh, if you want to, to study, you are interested by study a PhD on evolution of the nuclear stru structure in uh, exotic nuclei, you just click here, and you will have the publication on the details to apply. The deadline is for the 4th of January, and you will have all the details of, uh, of the laboratory that, that can uh, host you to have uh, a grant and uh, to study on this, uh, on, this, uh, on this PhD. This is uh, one of our programs. The, the program that will speak better with Ele Eleonora is uh, MOBGA. Make our planet great again. It was uh, at the beginning how to help for climate and um, and uh, climate change and uh, and uh, sustainable uh, science uh, development. Uh, this program started in 2017. is uh, focused for master and PhD students. Uh, also, we just finished a call for postdoc uh, students and advanced researchers. The topic are mainly about climate change, climate change, sustainability science, sciences, energy transition, societal challenge and environmental issues. We have since 2017, eight calls for master, for PhD, for postdoc and short stay students also. On eight Italian students and two Italian candidates from OPGA uh, four of 17, were, uh, were selected uh, for the last calls. The new calls will come in 2001-2022 for post-PhD um, post students, and it's entirely financed by, uh, by the French government. We have also another program, Eiffel, uh, like the Eiffel Tower, with uh, mainly for PhD students and master students with uh, 12 months mobility, sometimes two years, sometimes three years for PhD students, and uh, with a monthly allowance of 1,700 euro. And uh, the next uh, submission online application was on September 27 for a deadline in January 7. So you are still on for this, uh, this program. Publication of results uh, will be in April, and you can get more information on the, our page but uh, Christina tell me that we will share this presentation with uh, all the participants. So, uh, so I will not- yeah, sure, because all this information will be this, available uh, program. We were talking uh, with Grenoble University and the French Italian University about PHC, the program Hubert Curien Galilee. Uh, it's the main program that my service is, uh, is uh, dealing with. Uh, the, the idea is to facilitate the mobility of researchers with uh, two objectives, developing scientific and technological exchange between France and Italy, and promoting new scientific collaborations on new projects between uh, PhD students and post-PhD uh, students, young researchers mainly. Uh, so it's a joint venture between French and Italian researchers funded by both Ministry of French Education uh, on, uh, for an affair and the Italian Ministry for Higher Education. It's a very old program since 1994. Uh, the budget is uh, about 140,000 euro, 50% French, 50% Italian. 
we have it's it's in both sense. It's not uh, only Italian students who are coming, Italian researchers who are coming in France, but also French uh, French uh, researchers who are moving to Italy for a lot of different uh, scientific uh, issues and programs. And uh, usually the mobility is less than three months, but it helps laboratory to have. Uh, Publication, uh, joint uh, joint uh, actions on the on research in all kind of fields, from human sciences to uh, art sciences. Uh, since 2005 to, to 2020, there was uh, 1,880 applications submitted on nearly 400 projects funded by this program. So it's a very very important program to help uh, joint research between France and Italy. For all students who have been in France, they can share also uh, a lot of publication on the offers by our portal France Alumni. Uh, mainly uh, on this website, you will get, uh, uh, you can find here, you can get some offers on research offers also that are, that are published for Italian students and Italian researchers that have been in France and want to share with their colleagues uh, some more research or programs or job offers. So there are many uh, activities, events also who are published on France Alumni and I invite all former Italian students who have been in France to, to register on this portal. Uh, but just uh, to get the floor, I will, I, I will, I will share that with, uh, for a two minute speech with Eleonora that uh, they can share our experience to be a, uh, to have been a, a MOBGA alumni, and Ele Eleonora, what can you what can you tell about your experience on this program? What was the difficulties also you had when you came yeah. to to France? And uh, if you have to do it again, uh, what will be the advice for some other Italian students to to share this uh, this uh, this uh, this program on uh, on mainly on climate change? Thanks, uh, Eleonora. Thank you for introducing me. Uh, good afternoon to Just, everyone. Uh, we, we cannot hear you if you can uh, put your mic. Yeah, I, I deactivate. Uh, is it right? Do you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Uh, first of all, thank you. Uh, oh, I think the sound doesn't work still. Maybe we, we, can we can hear, hear Eleonora. We can hear Eleonora. Uh, Is it okay like that? Yeah, they, they say that they hear me, though, so I think we yes, can hear. Okay, okay. Uh, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, as uh, Francois said, I am Eleonora Fossile. Uh, I am a marine biologist, and now I'm a PhD student in marine geosciences at the University of Angers. Uh, I'm really pleased to be here today at this virtual meeting, so thanks for inviting me. Uh, I got the Make Our Planet Great Again uh, scholarship in 2018, and I've started to live in France since. I remember that before knowing about uh, the Mokbuga scholarship, I refused one scholarship in my home country because I deeply uh, desired to go abroad. And uh, I took this risk because I thought that uh, doing a PhD abroad could uh, have given a plus value to it. And uh, when you start to live in another country, you dive into the different culture with a different language. And even though sometimes it could be hard uh, because you feel lost, at the end, you will understand that you have learned much more and that the, uh, the face difficulties in your daily life were all worth it. At the end, I got the scholarship and I started my PhD in one of the best laboratories around the world in my research area here in Angers. As I said, at the beginning it could be difficult, and it was. All the administrative documents were written in French, and most of the people spoke to me in French, even though I asked them in English. The language could be a barrier if you're not willing to learn French. But in my case, I really enjoyed learning this language, and now I can say that I'm pretty good at it. When I moved to Angers, it was also hard to find an accommodation because here there are uh, too many demands compared to the availability. But luckily, with the support of uh, all my colleagues, I've, I was able to find a nice place after a few weeks. I can say that I, feel that I um, immediately felt at home. 
I found amazing colleagues that are also good friends. And without them, all these experience would have been different. I am lucky to have the opportunity to work in one of the best laboratories in my research field. In fact, when I started my PhD at LPGBF, Laboratoire de Planetology et Geodynamique Bioindicateur Actuel et Fossil, I immediately felt in the right place. Everyone was nice and welcoming. They included me immediately as a part of the team. And in this lab, there's no gap between professors and PhD students. We are all researchers and we can learn from each other. I, they, I had always uh, all the economic support I needed for my research. I was able to attend uh, international and national conferences. I traveled abroad for my PhD. Uh, I went to the Arctic, for example, for my PhD research. I participated to oceanographic cruises and more and more. France, uh, France is uh, not much different from Italy. The healthcare system is one of the best in the entire world. All facilities are well organized and not less important, food is quite good. And for an Italian, this is essential. <laughs> I have learned that uh, the French government help a lot of the residents. Uh, the university, for example, is almost free. Everyone can study. There are at least, it appears to me, no economic barriers. In some cases, you can get allowances. This country has many other positive qualities and principles, such as equality, but my speech would become too much longer if I can, uh, if I include all of them. Thank you, Eleonora. Um, <laughs> you already okay. did a great speech. Thank you very much for, for your sharing and for being here with us. Uh, Francois, can you hear us? Yes. Okay, uh, there's a question. Uh, for you and also for, um, um, are the opportunities that you presented uh, exclusive to Italians and French nationals or uh, people who have come from uh, French or Italian university could also apply? No, no, it's open for other nationalities, I think. But uh, it's, it's not a question of nationality, it's more the question of the university of origin you are coming from. So uh, if you are European, there, there is absolutely no problem. And from, from other nationalities, we have also uh, facilities. So just send me an email. I will write my email on, on the chat and, uh, and I can uh, answer you uh, directly. I just, I, I just like to add that, uh, you know, there is really a strong relation between France and Italy. I think Jean Cocteau used to say that uh, Italian people are, are French people with good mood. I don't know, maybe French people are Italian, uh, Italian people are, are yes, the good mood or the bad mood of the, of the French people, but we have so much to exchange. And even in research, as we see that with the uh, Eleonora uh, talks, that it's really fruitful for us to be uh, closer and closer. Yeah. Thank you very much, Francois. Uh, now let's move to Serena Turin. Serena, May, maybe. Um, I have just a very quick question. It is not uh, the place, but uh, I knew that Campus, uh, Campus Fran France um, uh, made a, did a, a great job, a wonderful job during the pandemic. Uh, I um, attended a webinar last year and uh, with Campus France. So is, just a very, very quick question. Is there something on your website about uh, what you did during the, during the pandemic? Yes, a, you can find some information in French and in English, not yet in Italian, but, uh, you know, mainly to, to, to sum up, you know, very quickly, the action of Campus France was to say, even if there is a pandemic, we want to welcome international students and we don't want to stop the borders. So uh, the schools were open, secondary schools and universities were open online mainly, so it was not easy for students, but we don't want any students will lose one year or two years because of the pandemic. So we had very willing uh, action to welcome all the students uh, during this this pandemic, and uh, this is the point. So we have, we have lost a lot. We have lost a lot of uh, Asian and American students, but students are coming from Europe, on North Africa, on the on the South uh, South Sahara Africa. You know, we are we are still there. It was not easy for them for housing and to meet people because of the pandemic. But they could study and they could succeed and they, they haven't lost a year of study. 
So this is the main point that we, we said. We want to let uh, borders open. And you know, even if borders were closed, there was an exception done for students from all the world. So they have the priority to travel for all, uh, no tourists, no one, but the students are our first priority. Okay, wonderful. Thank you for this additional information. So now, um, take the, uh, I invite uh, Serena Chiren to introduce also uh, your information. Please, Serena. I'm going to share my screen. Um, please tell me where you can see it. Yeah, it's working. Okay, I'll just. Sorry. Um, okay. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you for this presentation. As I already said, my name is Serena Keren, and I am part of the Marisco Dolska Curie Action team in Habre, the agency for the promotion of the European research. Just before to start, a um, few information about what Habre is. is the, um, its mission is to support and promote the Italian participation in the EU framework program for research and innovation through information, training, and assistance. Uh, it is a, a non-profit association with more than 150 associated members. Um, today we will talk about the postdoctoral fellowship schemes within the Marisco Dosca Curie Actions uh, in the Horizon Europe program, the Research and Innovation program of the European Commission. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, a quick uh, overview about uh, where we can find uh, our uh, the Marisco Dosca Curie within the Horizon Europe program. As for the previous one for Horizon 2020, also with Horizon Europe that uh, started this year, we found them under the first pillar on the excellent science. It is the union reference program for doctoral education and postdoctoral training since 1997. And the main objective of the postdoctoral fellowship is to enhance the creative and innovative potential of the researchers uh, holding a PhD that wish to acquire new skills through training, uh, advanced training, international, intersectoral, and interdisciplinary mobility. Um, just few characteristics of the recruited research, they have to be postdoctoral researchers, so already in possession of a PhD. They have to respond to the mobility rule that we will see very soon, can be of any nationality, and must have a maximum of eight year time equivalent experience in research. Um, the mobility rule says the uh, recruited research must not have resided or carried out must not have resided or carried out their main activity on work, studies, and so on in the country of the beneficiary for what concerns the European Postdoctoral Fellowship or the host organization for what concerns the outgoing phase of the Global Postdoctoral Fellowship for more than 12 months in the 36 months immediately before the call deadline. In order to make it easier, we will make an example targeting on the, um, today's event. Uh, for example, if I am an uh, uh, Italian research and I want to spend uh, to apply for a postdoctoral fellowship uh, in an entity established in France, I have to be sure that I did not spend 12 months uh, in the three years before the call deadline in France. And the same, the same thing is if I will be. Uh, uh, a French researchers and I want to spend to, to apply for a, a postdoctoral fellowship in an Italian uh, host organization. Um, the postdoctoral fellowship uh, as it, um, is divided into scheme, European postdoctoral fellowship and global postdoctoral fellowship. Um, for what concerns the European, the researchers can be of any nationality from any countries and the duration is uh, minimum 12 months and maximum 24 months. Uh, in an host organization based in Europe or in a country associated to Horizon Europe. 
for what concerns the Global Regulatory Fellowship, the researchers have to be European national or long-term residents, and it uh, has to be divided in two uh, phase. The first one is called the outgoing phase in a third country, so different to a member state or Horizon Europe uh, associated countries. And the first phase, the outgoing phase, needs to be minimum one year, maximum two, so minimum 12 months, maximum 24. And then a return phase where the researchers come back to the to a European uh, countries or Horizon Europe associated countries in order to uh, make their the transfer of knowledge and the duration need to be 12 months. Uh, within the uh, proposal, the researchers may opt also to spend uh, to spend uh, um, uh, a time uh, to spend uh, a time during in a secondment, so in a, in an organization different from the uh, organization beneficiary of the uh, of the project. Uh, these uh, the secondment should the duration should be one third of the Europe of the fellowship duration for Europe. European postdoctoral fellowship and one third of the first phase, the outgoing phase of the global postdoctoral fellowship. A novelty introduced in Horizon Europe is uh, that the secondment can take place in Europe and beyond. Um, another uh, uh, important novelty introduced under Horizon Europe is that uh, in, during the proposal phase, the researchers uh, may opt to include uh, uh, six months uh, of, at, at the end of the project in the non-academic sector. And this is useful to make better working condition at the end of the project to uh, give more possibility to, um, for the employment of the researchers at the end of the project. Project. Um, these the associated partners uh, uh, that will host the uh, the researchers. Uh, need to provide a letter of intent uh, just in, in the during the proposal phase in order to uh, provide to prove uh, the real commitment in the project. Uh, for what concerns the award criteria, uh, we have three criteria: excellent impact and quality and efficient of the implementation with a different uh, weight. 50% for excellence, 30% for impact, and the quality and efficiency uh, as a weight of 20%. Just the uh, proposal that uh, will take uh, uh, a score of 70% will be considered for funding. Uh, these are the evaluation panels uh, uh, of which the mm, which the, the, the researcher can, uh, can apply because uh, the, uh, arg the scientific argument is not defined by the topic, but is uh, freely chosen by the participants um, among these uh, eight uh, panel chemistry, social science and humanity, economic science, and so on. Um, this, the, this is the EU contribution for the postdoctoral fellowship, and you can read it uh, dividing uh, in uh, two parts. The contribution for the recruited research per person month and the institutional contribution per person. So you have the living allowance, the mobility, family, if it's applicable, long-term uh, allowance, special needs allowance, uh, if uh, these are uh, applicable. And then uh, for the host organization, for the participating organization in the action, research, training, and networking, man management, and uh, indirect contribution. Uh, these are the opening uh, deadline for this year. It, the, the deadline is already closed because closed uh, these months. But for the uh, calls of the 2022, uh, you have the, the, the opening on 30 of April and the deadline on 4th of September 2022. Uh, now, in order to, to get near the, the close of this presentation, we will see the COVID-19 uh, effects on the research mobility. And uh, in the specific case, the general approach adopted by the European Commission uh, that has been flexible and uh, targeted uh, case by case. 
because uh, it has been flexible as possible uh, as in the limit of the grant agreement uh, of the MSCA Individual Fellowship, that is the old name of the postdoctoral fellowship, because I remind you that uh, the Horizon Europe started this year. So, of course, the effect has been on the last call of the previous uh, um, Horizon, Horizon 2020 call. Um, post the postponing of the reporting deadlines, uh, the teleworking has been considered case by case, also the suspension, because it was according to the um, personal um, personal uh, condition of each fellows and of the country uh, of the host organization, but all the changes had to be agreed with the research executive agency before to uh, proceed with the implementation. In, uh, in the specific, in the case of the mobility, um, for what concerns an effect, important effect is uh, uh, that uh, if our researchers worked uh, for an entity established in country A, but due to COVID-19, he or she worked physically in another country, in a country B, for the mobility rule, their researchers will not be eligible neither for country A, neither for country B. So it is important to choose a third country. The, the impossibility to travel uh, has been uh, taking into consideration uh, the force majeure of the situation and the personal situation of the fellowship and uh, the assessment of uh, each individual case involved the project officer, the host organization and the legal advice. Of course, if uh, in case of suspension of a project, the secondment will not was not possible to uh, to take place. Um, here are uh, some useful link if you want to learn more about the Marisco Doscatu reactions, uh, the work program, the guide for applicants, the proposal template and how to fill it, and also the specific uh, frequently asked questions for postdoctoral fellowship, uh, where you can find also uh, other information on the mobility. Uh, you can find all the information on the funding and tender portals of the European Commission. Uh, just to uh, present uh, at the end the team of which I am part, it's me, um, Angelo D'Agostino and Marco Ferraro. Here you have all our email, the common email and uh, uh, telephone number. Of course, we are, I don't know if there are just some questions, but uh, we are available to give you information and clarify your doubts uh, also after the end of this event. So thank you for, uh, uh, for your attention. And I give the floor to Lucia or Cristina. Thank you very much, Serena, for your clear and very rich presentation of, of this Maurice Kladowska career actions. Um, just one question for you. Um, so you presented the delay, um, the deadlines for next year. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Um, do you have information on, on the delay to find a host institution to apply all together? For example, if for, I want to apply for next year, uh, when I should find an institution that is ready to receive me? Uh, sorry, I, I can hear you very well. Uh, the, the end of your question, I can you repeat, please? At what moment I should find a host institution to apply all together? Well, for if the uh, intention is to apply for the next uh, for the next year, uh, it is important to to contact in time the host institution so you can start to in, at the. Uh, at the moment uh, of the researchers uh, prefer to, to take contact with your institution just now, mm -hmm. but uh, not at the last moment, because this could be uh, a negative answer maybe for the host organization uh, and uh, the, the advice is as soon as possible, maybe. <laughs> and also another quick question. So for the postdoc Maris Kudowska calls, the proposed feature research that wins the competition will receive funding 
or it's a formality part of the application process? Um, I think I, I, I don't understand. Um, the proposal, I, I try to, to read the, again, uh, such that wins the competition, we receive funding. Of course, it will receive fund, but the, the funding is, uh, um, will be uh, received by the host organization, not uh, for not by the researchers on its own. So the funding, the, the funding saying, organization is the beneficiary of the project. And then the, the host institution, of course, will also pay salary for, re, for a researcher. Yes. Thank you, Serena, very much for these clarifications. Um, Let's move to the last speaker, Giovanna De Bernardi, who is here with us and will introduce the relevance of the study period abroad with the context of a cogital program. Welcome, Giovanna. We're happy to have you, and the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, perfect. Uh, well, thanks for inviting me at this uh, event. Uh, I will briefly introduce my uh, background uh, in order to, to explain uh, what, uh, what I did, uh, starting with my degree and uh, going to now. So I took my uh, degree in law at the University of uh, Turin. And uh, just after uh, my law degree, uh, I spent one year at the University of Nice in the south of France uh, to take a double degree. Uh, I decided to go to France and especially to Nice, well, Nice because it was close to the border with, uh, with Italy. And uh, uh, I decided to go to France because uh, I, in, I, I am bilingual with, uh, bilingual with, uh, with French because I studied for 13 years at the um, French School of Turin. So that's why uh, when I, I chose to, uh, to take a double degree, I chose uh, France. So I stayed in Nice for one year. And uh, at the same time, I uh, decided to take a PhD in law and especially in uh, private international law because that was a field uh, that uh, I studied when, while I was at the university. And that was the, the field uh, in which I uh, wrote my thesis uh, for my law degree. So I started my uh, PhD at the University of Turin so with a scholarship uh, given by the University of uh, Turin. Uh, and uh, since uh, I, at the same time I was at the University of Nice, I, I thought about uh, doing um, a thesis in joint program between Italy and France. I have to admit that at the beginning it wasn't so easy because uh, as um, the other PhD uh, student uh, said before, uh, sometimes uh, all the administrative um, uh, practices that you have to, to take in order to start uh, a program uh, abroad um, are not always easy because you have to speak with, the, uh, with, with one university, then uh, at the same time you have to uh, fill some papers at the other university. Uh, so uh, everything sometimes was a bit difficult, but uh, at the end, thanks uh, to the help, especially uh, to the University of Turin, because I have to say that uh, I was very helped by the University of Turin in that. So at the end, I've started uh, this joint program uh, between the University of Turin and the, the University of Nice. And so I spent uh, almost uh, three years and out uh, between Turin and, uh, and Nice uh, in order to write my thesis that I wrote in, uh, in French. Um, that was a very, uh, well, I, I can say that was a wonderful experience, uh, not, no, not only on the basis of what I'm doing the, today, but if I remember the period in France, um, I have very nice um, uh, 
because that was why because I had the possibility to take part to uh, all the activities organized by the University of Nice, in particular uh, by the research center uh, to which I took part. That was the Centre uh, for uh, sur le droit et uh, les procédures uh, of the, the uh, university of the Faculty of Law at the University of Nice. Uh, I had the opportunity to take part uh, to the um, uh, um, uh, l'association uh, des doctorants, so uh, the PhD Student Association of the University of Nice. Uh, I took part to the conferences organized um, by my research center, especially for PhD students. I had the possibility to publish in French, uh, thanks to um, my tutor at the University of Nice, and thanks in general to uh, the, all the activities organized by the University of Nice. But at the same time, I also took part to the activities organized by the University of Turin. So in three years, thanks to this joint program, uh, I, could, um, I could do all the other uh, activities that are related to uh, PhDs, such as uh, publishing, taking part to conferences, taking part to courses, uh, um, also delivering some um, uh, lessons uh, to the students, both at the University of Nice and at the University of Turin. And uh, at the end, uh, when I, I get to, to present, to discuss my thesis uh, in front of uh, uh, a commission, um, I presented my thesis uh, in French, since it was a thesis uh, written in French, uh, in front of a commission that was composed uh, both by uh, Italian and French uh, professors. Uh, coming both from France and um, and uh, and Italy. Uh, one finished. So once I finished my uh, PhD, uh, what I decided to do? Well, first I stayed at the university, which means that I tried to uh, keep with the academic career, and uh, to do that. I was, it was very helpful for me to, um, have, uh, to have uh, a joint PhD. Why? Because thanks to my joint PhD, I, uh, I, I obtained, I got um, a, teaching, well, a, a contract at the University of Nice for two years as uh, ATER, which stays for uh, Attaché Temporaire d'Enseignement et de Recherche. Uh, which is for uh, all the people that say that uh, study in French, in uh, France, uh, a sort of, uh, I wouldn't say professor, because it's, uh, it's not still a professor, but this is a contract that gives you the possibility to uh, someone that has already got a PhD or is preparing a PhD to, to teach to students to, to, to manage uh, courses, so directly to deal with, uh, with students. And so it's a good way to, to learn how to teach because sometimes uh, during the PhD, a student, uh, do, uh, they, they do their researches, they take part to, uh, to conferences, uh, they publish articles or uh, in general they do um, uh, some uh, written activities, but they don't have the possibility to, to just to teach, so to uh, to deal with the students. And uh, in that, in when while I was in France, in France, I had this opportunity, especially through the the contract of uh, of ATER. And probably, if I hadn't uh, decided to do a joint PhD, I wouldn't have had the possibility to. Uh, to have this contract. So after my PhD, I did two years uh, as a ATER, as I said, at the University of Nice. And at the same time, because I like doing everything at the same time, um, I tried to, um, to make open a sort of plan B, which means that I told to myself, uh, not to focus everything only on the career, academic career, because I couldn't be sure that uh, I would have succeeded 
in uh, in uh, in this uh, with the academic with the academic career. So at the meanwhile, I decided to uh, to to try to pass the exam to become a judge because. Uh, together with uh, PhD and in general the academic career, I've always also been interested in uh, in the profession of uh, of judge. So I prepared the exam to become a judge while I was finishing uh, my PhD and while I was doing my contract as a pair. And uh, I was lucky because I passed uh, this exam. So right now I'm working. As a judge at the, uh, the tribunal of the court, at the court of uh, Termini Merese, which is in Sicily, close, very close to Palermo. And uh, even if right now I'm doing uh, a, prof a work, so uh, a job that can appear, that, or could appear uh, different to, uh, to being a professor or working at the university, in the reality, there are uh, a lot of uh, common activities uh, so that are um, similar to, uh, to, to, to academic uh, job and, uh, judge and, and to be a judge. Like, for example, when I have to, to prepare a hearing, uh, the fact um, of having a thought, of having a, had an experience as a teacher at the university helped me a lot because I know I, how to deal with, uh, with the parties. And sometimes I uh, can assure you that uh, I have to deal with uh, seven or eight parties just that are in front of me. And sometimes it's easier to teach the student than to uh, deal with parties at the, at the hearing. So in that, uh, the PhD helped me. Or another, another thing in which uh, PhD helped me is uh, to write, uh, just to write the decision, because every time uh, I have to write a decision, I have to study. Because, of course, in order to write a decision, I have to study the case, I have to do researches, uh, I have to look at uh, sometimes other case laws, uh, I look uh, at, the, at the doctrines. So sometimes I read articles that uh, are focused on uh, particular questions uh, in which maybe uh, there, there are not case law. So I have to find a solution. And in that, uh, the fact of writing a thesis, the fact of uh, doing researches uh, really helped me because it, um, uh, it tells me to know um, how to select uh, articles or case law that are really relevant to my case uh, and can really help me to, to, to deal a particular question and so to write uh, my decision. Uh, or also another example uh, which demonstrates that PhD doesn't only use, uh, doesn't only um, uh, it is not only useful when you work at the uh, at the university, but can also be useful when you do other jobs. Is the fact that uh, right in the last year, so when when I started uh, my position as a judge in this uh, court, I uh, took part to a research project organized by the, Euro the European uh, Judicial uh, Training. And uh, here again, the fact of uh, having the, the fact of having uh, prepared a PhD helped me to take part to this research to this uh, research project, uh, to and especially in the presentation and the, the, the preparation of uh, of uh, of the project. So you, John. Okay. no, I just one thing that I, that I would like to add is that uh, the, um, what I suggest to all the PhD students that are doing a PhD right now is uh, to, 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 to keep a sort of plan B in order that once you, you will have your PhD, 
if you uh, decide not to stay at the university or just, I know you are not sure to, to stay at the university, you know what to do with your PhD. And you, you, you know that you, you can do other things and the, the fact of having a PhD doesn't mean that you have necessarily to stay at the university. That's what I think. And that's what PhD uh, learned to, to me. Thank, Thank you very much, much Giovanna, for your encouraging words. I have a, one question for you. Yeah. Since uh, you had two supervisors from Italy and France, was it difficult on to establish a good relationships on personal level and also cultural level? Well, on personal level, uh, not at all. Because, uh, as I said at the beginning, um, when I arrived in Nice, as PhD student, I had already stayed in Nice for one year because I stayed there for uh, my double law degree. So I, I already knew the university, I had already some friends. So uh, that wasn't difficult at all on this side. Um, then uh, the other was the personal and the other, that was two questions. On the cultural. Ah, cultural. And cultural. And cultural, um, no, no, I would, I just have to say that one thing, one difference that I really noticed was the fact that uh, in Italy, my PhD has to last for three years because my scholarship was for three years. Uh, whereas in France, uh, the usually thesis lasted for, for four, sometimes even five years. And if you finish your thesis, uh, in less than four years, at least for law school, I don't know for the other uh, fields, but in law, usually the fact of doing a PhD in less than four years is not seen very, I mean, very well. And that was a difference that I noticed because in Torino, they told me you have to finish your thesis in three years. In Nice, they told me, no, if you finish your thesis in three years, that's not good. So I, uh, that was the, the difference that I really noticed. For the rest, no, I, I didn't notice so particular differences. Thank you very much, Joanna, and You're also welcome. the public. Uh... For the public, also the audience is welcoming for your, um, and uh, thank you for uh, all your different elements. Um, Thank you all our speakers for this very rich and insightful information.